Hello, my name is Wendy Myers. Welcome to the Myers Detox Podcast. You can check out my website at myersdetox.com where we have hundreds of articles and hundreds of podcasts about heavy metal and chemical detoxification and really everything that supports that as well, diet, lifestyle, and also energy energy work, bioenergetics. And today we have a show with my friend Shauna Lee. Um, she's such a treasure in my life and has helped me so much and it's really important to me to share her message about tapping into your soul's frequency, the frequency at which you vibrate and finding that and aligning with it so that you can get everything that you want in your life and experience the joy that you deserve. And so today we'll be talking about how physical weight is really a manifestation of energetic weight. And when released, this energetic weight or this energetic healing sets your weight in life on the path that you desire. So get ready to be inspired today. And basically what we cover in today's show is how childhood trauma can be influencing the decisions that you make today and how energy work can quickly break unhealthy patterns and set you free. We'll talk about what energy frequency has to do with weight loss and how to harness the power of energy work to achieve your desired weight. We'll talk about the three steps to losing emotional and energetic weight and Shauna's highly unique approach to working with clients that makes changes in their life personally and professionally. We'll also be talking about her upcoming five week program where she works with like a small group of women. You can work individually with her like I do, but you can also work in her small groups and just get all inspired together. Um, so I know you guys listening to this show are concerned about heavy metal toxicity. So I created a quiz to determine your levels of toxins in your body. Go to heavymetalsquiz.com, takes two seconds, and after the quiz, you get your results to let you know if you have high or relative low levels of toxins based on your lifestyle factors and lifestyle habits. And then you get a free video series after that that talks to you about the next steps, uh, what testing to do, the do's and don'ts of detox, the number one mistake people make in detox. It's an amazing education that you get after taking this quiz, and then you'll learn Learn, um, you know, testing for heavy metals, what your options are, and also where to start on your detox journey. So go to heavymetalsquiz.com and take it today. Our guest, Shauna Lee, she is an intuitive healer and celebrity manifestation coach. And she's the number one best selling author of The Soul Frequency Your Healthy, Awakened, and Authentic Life. She's the founder of the soulfrequency.com and the Soul Frequency Show podcast, leading the conversation on raising your energy frequency and creating a life founded on truth and alignment. She is a speaker, a businesswoman, and consultant to executives of Fortune 500 companies, celebrities, influencers, and fashion industry experts. So I, I really encourage you to discover your true frequency at Shauna's website, thesoulfrequency.com. Shauna, thank you so much for coming on the show. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here. Well, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and, and how you work? Yeah, so um, one of the key areas that I have always focused on is frequency, understanding our energetic frequency. And you can absolutely relate this to your physical health, to any really any area of your life. And through my research within my practice, I have found that you really can't affect a change in energy in one area and not have a domino effect in other areas, which is a great thing because let's say we're focusing on weight or we're focusing on physical health, it's also going to apply to the other areas of your life. And so when we get into, I know there's all kinds of understandings of what energy work is or understanding energy medicine. I know it's a very exciting conversation, um, but specifically we have the ability at this time to change the frequency that we resonate at and when we do that, within my practice and within my research, we have seen profound shifts 
in things that people have been troubled with, problems that they've had in their body, problems that they've had in their lives. And it's a really, really exciting place to dive in, especially for people that have maybe um, you know, been on a health journey for a while, people that are interested in what that next level is, to understand your own personal frequency, which I call your soul frequency, um, is an exciting new terrain for healing. Yeah, it's it's so interesting because I you're one of the first energy healers or energy workers that I for, that I first started working with, and I just was so amazed by how good I felt after a session with you, by the progress that I made in my life, the the tremendous insights that I had after working with you, and I just love talking with you because I I learned so much not only about you know, a, a different paradigm about how the world works, but I, I learn a, a lot about myself as well. And so that's why I, I love sharing your work with uh, with the listeners. And so let's talk a little bit about, um, about energy. And so what is emotional and energetic weight? So in my own personal journey, I had struggled with weight when I was younger and certainly tried many different things. I think a lot of times we have a lot of things going on in our life and it can manifest as physical weight on our body. And we tend to notice that first, right? We look in the mirror, we go, ah, I don't, I want to lose 10 pounds. I want to lose 20 pounds. I want to lose 50 pounds. Like I'm not happy with my physical body. And so through my research and starting to dive deeper starting with my own journey, but then years after that, I started to understand the concept of weight in an entirely different way. And what's interesting is they recently took a survey of people and asked them, like, what is it with physical weight? Like, what is it? Why are people overweight? And 31% of people said it's exercise. People don't exercise enough. 26% people said, you don't, I, we don't eat well, right? If we ate better, we would lose weight. And the list went on and the very bottom respondent was 10% of people said it was psychological. And certainly there are psychological factors, but I'm going to go deeper than that to looking at the emotional and energetic factors that basically come into play with our physical weight. And I believe that physical weight is a lot of times stored emotion, right? It can be energy that we pick up from other people, energy that doesn't feel good to us. And sometimes we're not even aware of that. There's a lot of underlying factors that drive the behavior of how we eat, of how we take care of ourselves, of the things that we choose to do day in and day out. And I think we live in a society that really looks top down, right? We go, okay. I've got weight on my body. I need to exercise more. I need to, you know, eat better food, which I agree with those. Those are great tools. Um, and then we might try that and it might not work or it might not work for the long term. And we go, oh my gosh, I don't have willpower or I feel horrible that this didn't work out. And from my vantage point, I'm going, but what about all the stuff underneath? What about the things we aren't looking at that are not only going to help our physical bodies, but they're going to shift the way we behave in life, the way we show up in life and what becomes possible? Because a lot of times what people don't even see is that so much of their life purpose, so much of feeling loved and feeling fulfilled and all the things that we want to feel, right? We want to feel compassion. We want to feel joy. All of those things have to do with looking at this emotional and energetic plane of healing. Yeah. So I, I resonate with that so much because I have, I've had a couple of periods in my life where I've gained a lot of weight. And one of them was with my second husband where I felt very um, emotionally and verbally abused. And I, I, my girlfriend helped me identify that where I was gaining weight to almost serve as like this energetic insulation to like protect myself uh, from him. And so, but, in, but that it can be, you know, related to anything. If you hate your work, you're not living an authentic life. Um, it's almost can serve as a kind of a protective barrier, you know, so to speak. So talk to me about the, the four levels of healing that you've discovered. Yeah. So there's the physical level, and this is where we tend to be aware 
right? We're most aware of our physical. We're actually not super aware of any of the levels of healing for the most part until we have something happen on the physical level, which is really the tip of the iceberg. Beneath that is the mental level, right? Our thoughts. Um, we, we, we hear more about the mental and the physical level in our society than we do about the other two, which is the emotional. And then you can call it the spirit level. I also call it the energetic level. And what's fascinating is that anything that ends up at the physical level began at the energetic level, moved through the emotional level, moved through the mental level, and then ended up at the physical level. So it's not something that came out of the blue. It's been moving through your different levels of being, which is why I think it's so exciting and groundbreaking to start looking at those lower two levels because then it's not going to move up to your mental level. It's not going to move up to your physical level. So it's preventative care. And the emotional level I found within my research and within my practice and working with thousands of people is the level where we create all. So what's fascinating about that is the emotional level is where we store, right? And the emotional level is also our creative capacity. So whether we want to create better health, whether we want to create a certain career or a job, that emotional level is where that occurs. It's also the level that people are least comfortable with. From a socialization standpoint, we are taught when we're very young to not, not feel our emotions. Like, don't cry. You know, it's inappropriate to get upset here. Don't talk back to me. Don't speak your truth. You know, in so many different ways in the families we grow up in, they all mean well, um, but we're just taught to suppress our emotion. So when you think about that on a bigger level, we're taught to suppress our creativity. We're taught to suppress our truth. We're taught to suppress our number one healing plane of existence. And so I'm very passionate about talking about that emotional level because so much unlocks for people in healing at that level. Yeah, yeah. So talk to us about the, the three steps uh, to losing emotional and energetic weight. Yeah, so before we, like I said, before we end up with physical weight, we are carrying around emotional and energetic weight. It, for every human being, we've got some level of this. For some people, it's e easy for them to offload it if they're a person that finds themselves um, just saying anything on their mind, you know, a personality that just easily speaks their, how they feel. And sometimes it can even be, those personalities can even be like, whoa, I can't believe she said that or he said that. Um, but it's actually very healthy. They're actually offloading a lot of energy before it ends up at the physical level. Other people who are, are sometimes our sweetest, most empathetic personalities tend to hold in, right? So the three keys that we need to look at if you identify as somebody that, that is somewhat aware that you're holding in some emotion or not really saying things that you would want to say in life, the first step is awareness. We have to know what is it that I'm holding in? And we trick ourselves sometimes, right? We don't always tell ourselves the truth about what's going on in our life. And this is where I really work with people to scan their energetic system and see what is out of alignment, right? Where is this person not telling the truth? And bring that up to the level of awareness. Because if we don't know about it, it's hard to do anything about it. If we're not aware about certain things that we are believing, then how do we have a shift around that? So once we bring something up to a level of awareness, there's usually something that we need to do about that. Which I created, um, a thing, I think I gave you a link to a free PDF called the Alignment Conversation. Um, what I found in my work is that we don't know how to have powerful conversations. We just, we don't know where to start. We don't know how to finish, right? So this helps us hold in all that emotional energy. Cause like, I don't want to get in a fight or I don't want to upset anybody or rock the boat. And so I literally in this PDF break down how to have a powerful conversation to shift the energy. So yeah, a lot of people aware. don't, they, if they're getting along with someone, they're getting along with their spouse and things are going good. They don't want to get in a confrontation and kind of ruin it or have that lead to a fight. And a lot of people avoid the, these harder conversations, even though they're, they're healthy and they can move forward and feel better because of it. Yeah. And two things I see all the time is we either hold back, hold back until we finally blurt it out. 
and it will be very much in a blame, like you need to stop doing this and you stop this and I'm going to stand up for myself or whatever it is, right? And it comes off as very blame oriented to the other person. And the second that that happens, people's defense mechanisms go up and then it's an argument, right? It's not a constructive conversation. And so because we don't know how to start the conversation and we don't know how to lay the foundation for what needs to be said, knowing that we just need to get the emotion out and we need to move the energy out of our body, right? And not hold on to it. Um, we don't know how to have that constructively. So I break that down for people so that they literally have the tools. I also do a free 20 minute training where I take them through every single of the seven steps of that conversation so they can see an example of me doing the conversation and also knowing why each step in the conversation is important. Each step has its own reason for being there um, that's really valuable. And the third step is action. Um, one of the things that I think is our biggest tool that we have in our tool belt to change anything in our life is being able to take action, not feeling in fear, not feeling stuck, and being able to take powerful, positive action. So in, um, I do a small group called the Soul Frequency Experience. It's a very intimate, um, small group kind of sacred circle, call it, where we come together to basically heal on that emotional, energetic level. And I take them through how to move into action, right? How to become aware, how to really master the alignment conversation, how to move into action. And it's extraordinary what happens in people's lives. Like even within the five week program, I mean, forget about what happens a year down the line, but within the five week program, um, it just, it, it blows my mind to see what these women experience and how their lives move forward and what gets shared in this circle. It's a very safe space. Um, I've been in lots of programs in my life. Um, and so one of the intentions that I had in creating this is making it like feel like the most cozy, warm group of people that you can't wait to return to. And so every year when we're done, people are like, no, it's not over yet. <laughs> we want to keep going. So it's, it's extraordinary. But those three keys anyone can start with in their life. Yeah, well, I want to join that group. You should come <laughs> in. You should. It's special. Yeah, because one of my New Year's resolutions is to lose a few pounds, and I may need to work on my, my energetic weight. Girl, come <laughs> in. We would love to have you. There's some incredible women. We're starting January 28th, and a couple of the women that are already signed up in the group are just extraordinary human beings. I've known them, I've worked with them personally, um, and they're coming for a big deep dive. They both have really powerful intentions. I'm like, oh, whoever ends up in the group with these ladies, yeah. like it's just gonna draw <laughs> in some good energy, so. Well, what happens during during your uh, the Soul Frequency experience during this five-week program? Well, the funniest thing about it is I say to everybody on the first day, um, you know, nobody really knows what's going to happen in this circle. And you guys all signed up anyways, and you came here to be with, and, and everyone goes, yeah, I just felt called to it. I felt like, you know, I should do this, but you're right. Like, we're not really sure how this all works. And that's kind of the fun of it is the discovery of like hearing the call, like your soul is saying, yeah, I got to do this, right? Or your intuition is telling you, this is for me. And showing up there, um, we go through immense tools for a lot of times fear comes up for people in making life changes, any life change. So we really transform the idea of fear and the concept of fear and how we relate to fear. Um, we start, I certainly get people having the conversations that they, they want to have and should be having and that they identify should, that they should be having. Um, people create businesses and missions in this group. Like they really have, I always say that when we can peel back the layers and take off the veil that keeps us not seeing and not fe feeling clear, like sometimes people go, I just don't feel clear on my life. Like, I don't know why I'm here or I don't know why I keep struggling with my weight and I have no clarity around this. So we take that veil off and we suddenly have clarity. And with clarity, action becomes a logical next step. So I've had businesses be created within the group. I've had people stop drinking alcohol. I've had people change their diets like, and never look back. I mean, there's just profound shifts that happen and they're unique to everybody, but there's something really important on the energetic plane about bringing a group of people together 
with the common understanding that we're all here to support each other in shifting and changing. So we make really powerful intentions and we all activate right? that intention for that other person. Um, and I coach people through the entire five weeks. So we're on a group chat and every day the, this small group of people is talking together. And so like if there's a bad day, we're all there to share that. And I think that's the support that people, when the program is over, are going, no, I don't want to leave this safe place where I can say all the things that maybe in life I don't feel like I can say, or it doesn't feel safe to say them. And I can, you know, people have divulged some very personal things um, in the circle and really been loved for them. And I think we desire to be able to tell the truth and have people love us for it and care for us. And so it's a really compassionate experience. And so, so when I first had my first call with you, I had a call, like an exploratory call to kind of figure out if I wanted to work with you. And it was just so powerful. It just moved me so much. I just, without question, I thought I need to work with this person. I need to figure out what what she's talking about, what she's doing, how she's doing it, so that I can receive the the benefit in, in my life and you know step more into my life purpose and help get guidance and make right decisions. And you know, a lot of us uh you know have to kind of accept that you know when there's a certain there's a certain way I think that people think of problem solving like they're just going through life and um, they're, they're trying to make the right decisions and sometimes they just make wrong decisions because energetically they don't know how to work in their life with energy or you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you help kind of open that doorway with, for people. Can you explain that a little bit? Yeah. So a bit better than I, I am. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> no, it's a great, it's a great question. Um, when you look into somebody's energetic system, the way it occurs for me is what is what is true and good and right, and what is feeling off to this person. You know, we may feel off, but we may tell, not tell ourselves the truth, right? Like things could be in our life, we could have relationships, or we could be doing things in our life that we're not really happy with, and we don't feel good about it. I just can see those things. And so it literally looks like almost like a computer program, right? Of all of these different aspects of self. And when you look at what is in alignment, those things have good energy behind them, right? That's going to move your life forward on your path, whatever your individual path is. When we have these misalignments, I call them in our energy, it, it slows down that path, right? It slows down our ability to create things in our life, right? Or to manifest something. And the toughest part when I look is I can also see what does this person realize? Do they see these things, right? Or do they not conscious, are they not consciously aware of them? When we're not consciously aware, we just don't know. Then you experience things like, why am I always like not having enough money, right? Or why am I always feel like I go through the same thing in relationships? Or why, you know what I mean? Do I lose 10 pounds and gain it back right away? It's like that type of frustration where you feel like you're in a pattern but you can't, you just don't know how to get out of it. You don't even know, for some people, they don't even know it's possible to get out of it. They just say, oh, well, this is life. And so when I start looking at this, you know, on a very like technical level with frequency, from way of genetics, we know that the energy that creates DNA is linguistic in nature. So when I speak to somebody, I'm speaking a certain language beneath the human language I'm speaking that has their energy like come back online, right? Some of us kind of, you know, get to the point in life where we're walking around not feeling super good in our life or not feeling super energetic or having certain areas of our life that we feel like, mm, I'm just not going to deal with this area of my life. We want everything to come back online so that we can see what we need to see and we can move forward in our life. All of this supports the physical body. The physical body riddled with emotion, right? That's unexpressed and riddled with the energy of other people. Like if we have energy vampires around us, right? People that are taking from us all the time, it's going to be very hard to have your body be physically healthy. It's going to be very hard to feel good in your life. So as we start to just 
clean out some of that dissonant energy, it's literally like a frequency of dissonance within our system, then, then we can start to be aware of who we really are. Like, why am I really here? And what is my greatest potential and possibility in my life? Until we lift that veil, we just can't see it. Yeah. And I think and this, this is what I tell people, because sometimes people will say, oh, I want to you know, I want to meet a great, a great guy. And it seems like there's no great guys out there. I'm like, there are great guys around your field everywhere, but you're, you have some things that are not allowing that to come into your life. So, so it's, there's no, there's always, it's always abundant, right? There's always the things that we desire are around us, but they can't move in until we look at the reasons and the things within us that are causing them to stay on the periphery. Yeah. And I think the same thing holds true with say when someone is physically trying to lose weight and attempting to do that and they're doing everything right. They're doing everything by the book. They're going keto, they're exercising, they're just doing everything. And it's just not budging. Yeah. It's not what you're doing. Like you yeah. can just keep doing that. I mean, I've heard this from countless women and they blame themselves or self-control. It's, it's an energetic issue where you're you're stuck in some way or you're around a person who is an energy vampire you're not living your truth and you just uh you can do all the physical stuff you want you've got to work on the energetic level exactly and you bring up a great point i mean for people that feel like they are doing all the right things on the physical level like the supplements and the eating well i mean that is the absolute litmus test that it's existing what needs to heal is existing on a different level of your being Right. And it's not that, I mean, I eat healthy. I love supplements. I do all of those things too. Um, but they're not, they're just, it's looking at only half the pie. Right. And when we look at and open the door to the emotional and energetic work, then we're looking at a whole pie. And then we have like a global healing of our life, right? Not just our physical body, but our life. And I also think that sometimes we are, are, that we should address that first. We should look at like, what are the things that cause me to eat? What are the, why, like if, I, if I, I'm a person that feels like I am overeating, like what is driving that behavior? Cause that's on the emotional and energetic level. And so if we were gonna go on a detox or a diet, let's look at the other stuff so that we can have a really successful experience because we've, we've changed our behavior because what's driving the behavior has shifted. Right. I, I remember um, when I used to help people with holistic health early in my career, I had a 5% of my clients were clients who literally, like if you, when I gave them a meal plan and I told them what, you know, what is healthy to eat, they did it without any resistance. They had zero resistance. They just ate on the meal plan, they lost weight, and they just went about their life eating healthy forever. They just had never been taught what were healthier foods. Only 5%. And what I started to see is that the other 95% of people, there was this stuff on the energetic and emotional level that was causing behavior, right? Behaviors with food and, and lack of the ability to be consistent in certain behaviors. Um, and we would run up against those, right? And this is what piqued my curiosity from my own journey with, with being overweight when I was younger and being able to heal that and consistently now for over 15 years stay the same weight um, and also be able to heal the desire to eat certain things or to overeat. So it's not like I restrict myself, right? I just have, I have healed what is beneath right? The food. So the desire went away. And had I not had that experience in my own life, I don't know that I would see it like I do now and have been able to help other people facilitate that. Yeah. Can you talk about emotional trauma also and how that in our lives contributes to, to waking? Absolutely. I mean, that's probably up there on the biggest piece of the pie of emotion. So we have our everyday emotions that we feel like frustration at work, frustration with our partner. But when we've been through a large traumatic event, which can be anything from a death of a loved one, you know what I mean? To any, any type of abuse, um, even car accidents, like any big event in our life, um, 
nine times out of 10, the emotion from that event has not been able to move out of the body. So, so we have, for many reasons, self-protective reasons, like held in that experience that's actually within, like our body remembers that experience. And if we're not able to fully emote through that, like then it's literally part of what's causing us to do a lot of different behaviors. Like, so sometimes I have worked with people on releasing an emotional trauma. I had a client once um, who had a, her father passed away and she didn't want to go through graduation for her PhD because her father wasn't going to be there. Um, so she literally just almost didn't graduate because she didn't want to face her father not being there. And we went through a really powerful experience one-on-one -on -one where I led her right into the middle of that emotion to, to feel it fully and let it, let it move out of her body. And, um, you know, doing that doesn't take as long as we think it does. When you can move right through that emotion, it's probably an hour to two hours if you're guided by somebody who knows how to do that. And then on the other side of it, she was able to finish, finish her dissertation, to graduate, to go on. She's now a healer herself um, and helps other people. But she was holding in this experience, and she had for years um, by the time she and I found each other and started working together. So I just want to give everybody the comfort that if you have been through an emotional trauma, um, it is possible to to move that emotion out of your body, right? To complete on that emotion, even if it's something really, really devastating, um, holding it in builds that devastating experience so that it can sometimes feel so big to us that it's scary to look at, um, but it's just energy. Emotion is energy and it just wants to move. And so it's entirely possible to heal from that. Yeah, I'm telling you, I have, you know, taken a lot of psychology classes and done a lot of talk therapy with all kinds of different therapists, just kind of like a hobby of mine since I was a teenager. And I mean, I never made more progress than when working with someone who works on the energetic realm like you do, or other people that I've worked with that are maybe call themselves intuitives or or whatever you know, label you want to put on it, you just, it's such a faster progress mm -hmm. and such a faster release because you're working on a much, at the, the deepest root level and it's so much more efficient and, and fast. Yeah, it is. It's, I say it's the straight shot to healing. It's the fast shot, right? Where we can, and, and again, it's going to benefit every area of someone's life. There's not many things that we do that benefit every single area, but I see it all the time in my work. And it's, um, it's profound. I think what's happening right now um, is that we are understanding at a different level what healing really is. And there's a quickening going on, meaning we're not meant to struggle and suffer forever. Um, we're not meant to be unwell. And so there are new, I call them technologies, like, and certainly energy and frequency, you know, using frequency to adjust our own energetics is the fastest way that we can heal. We can align our energy with another reality, meaning like a, a reality where we're healthy, an energy system where we feel good in our body. It's entirely possible to align ourselves with that. And then, you know, you see the physical things start to dissipate in the, in the body, the, the, the aches, the pains, the getting sick, you know, all that kind of stuff just starts to go away as we get rid of those dissonance in our field. Yeah. And then also when you're doing that kind of work and your, your, your vibration gets higher and you're working more in like the frequency you're supposed to be in, or you move into that frequency, you know, you, you lose people, you detox people that you're not supposed to be around or jobs where you just, you can't exist in that space anymore. Yeah. Or, or what have you, just, um, you just, you move forward, you move, you start attracting and moving towards people or relationships or work that you're supposed to be doing and are more in alignment with you. It's incredibly powerful. Yeah. And doesn't it feel like so good? I mean, I think sometimes we are afraid of losing anything from our life, right? Like we don't even want to throw away clothes in our closet when, <laughs> when we don't wear them anymore. We don't like to get rid of anything per se or release anything. But I always tell people, nothing feels better 
than to be in alignment with yourself. Nothing feels better than to be creating you in this world, whatever that is. And the people that you attract when you are feeling good and in alignment will feel so good to you, right? They feel supportive and loving and caring. And so if there are people that leave your life, you will, I guarantee, look back and go, oh yeah, well that had to happen because then all these other great people were able to come into my life. Mm -hmm. And now it feels so good. My life feels so happy and so joyous. I mean, sometimes we don't have perspective. Like we just don't know what it feels like to feel really good. And yeah. so you start feeling really good and you're like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. I want to live like this all the time. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, that closing those doors can be incredibly painful where you're yeah. you know, having to make a decision to break up with a business partner or leave your spouse or change your job. It can be very scary. That change is so scary. We don't like change typically. Um, but um, then you know, you're, you just move through that, move forward and you're free. You just, another amazing door opens. Yeah. And it always, you know, it's so funny because it happens in increments, right? Like we're always afraid of big changes or big things happening. And I always say to people, your energy is benevolent, right? Your energy knows what you can handle. And so it's not going to do things that you're not ready for, right? Like it's those little steps, right? Which can be beginning with speaking up right? Like using the alignment conversation, speaking up for yourself, like that might be just step one. We don't have to go from zero to a hundred, but over time, like those little action steps and those little changes. And that's really what we do in the soul frequency experience program is start getting into action together and feeling the support of a community behind you, cheering you on and people in the group. It's really interesting because I've had people bring into the conversation. Like for instance, I had one, um, person who was part of the group who wanted to stop drinking. She thought she was having a bit of a problem with it. And she brought that into the conversation in the group. And it turned out that there were three other people feeling the same way in the group. And so they all started to support each other in this journey. And they all saw themselves within the other person. And you can't, I couldn't have planned that, but it just, it, it was something that came to the surface in the group. And I see that all the time. It's like, that's why I say, listen, you know, if you feel called to it, listen to that call. Cause you're just going to be amazed at, at the connections and, and the things that you learn in there and the people you get to connect with. So talk to us about the, uh, like where we download the PDF for, you know, helping to, to do the alignment conversation. So like it's a, people can start working on these alignment conversations and verbally expressing, you know, starting that journey that they need to go on. Yeah, no, it's so good. I sent this out to my list because we just created this because I was kept using it in my private practice. I'm like, I had to give this to people. And people were emailing me back. They're like, I need this tonight. I'm going to look at this tonight. Um, you can go to thesoulfrequency.com forward slash detox. And you can grab that there. And then once you get the PDF, within the PDF is a link to the free 20-minute training that you can watch. Okay, fantastic. And, and so if one, someone's feeling called to work with you, how do we join the, your five-week program? You can go to the soulfrequency.com forward slash Myers Detox for that one. And you can read all about more about the program there and get signed up. We have, we limit the program to a small circle. Like I said, everybody knows everybody's name. It's not one of those things where you're going to be one of a hundred people. Um, we're all going to miss you. If you don't show up one week, we're going to be texting you going, where are you? Right. <laughs> um, so if you're interested, it fills up quick. And I think we start January 28th. So. Fantastic. Yeah. So guys, I highly, highly recommend that you experience working with Shauna. It's just been a profound experience in my life and has helped me create so many shifts and create the life that I have today, which I'm so thankful for. I could not be happier. And, and I continue to work with you and uh, continue to look, you know, work with you in the future and, or look forward to working with you in the future. So I highly recommend you guys take this opportunity to join the group and check out what it's all about. Wonderful. Yeah. So Shauna, thanks so much for coming on the show. Is there, are there any parting words or just anything you want to mention that you, the listeners may need to hear? Yeah. Just one step at a time, right? Everything happens one step at a time. And when we make 
a powerful choice in our life, whether it's, you know, grabbing the alignment conversation, just having that conversation, everything, the energy, the emotion will start to shift from there. Fantastic. Well, everyone, thanks for tuning into the Meyer She Talks podcast. Thank you so much, Shauna, for coming on the show today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. And guys, thanks for tuning in every week. It's just such a pleasure to serve you guys every week and educate you guys on how to be healthier, whether it's on the energetic level, on the emotional level, on the physical level, detoxing your body. There's, uh, we have to detox our energy vampires too. So uh, thanks for tuning in and I'll talk to you guys next week.